Hello, my name is Justin Newton. I work at Remcom, and I'll be talking today about meshing network design using XFDTD. For 28 years, we've been developing our full wave solver called XFDTD with antenna designers in mind. This presentation will cover the capabilities in XF for matching networks, including our new schematic editor and frequency domain circuit solver, which are major additions to how we think of matching network design. In recent years, there has been an explosion of frequency bands driven by throughput requirements, which have been realized by carriers with techniques like aggregation, modulation, LTE, or 5G, and this means the number of bands and data consumption is huge. In addition to all the cellular bands, we have to account for every flavor of Wi-Fi and GPS, or even NFC, for example. At the same time, industrial design of modern RF devices has constrained antenna volume and pushed the majority of antennas to the perimeter of the traditional rectangular shape, putting a squeeze on available antenna space and bandwidth. To overcome this, devices need to be able to tune for all of their various antenna states, necessitating complex meshing networks to maintain system efficiency. To support engineers with matching network design, we released our schematic editor and frequency domain circuit solver with XFDTD version 10.2. Traditionally with XF, you would have had to run a multitude of simulations to test your matching network designs. Now with our new schematic editor and circuit solver, we can test any number of schematic designs using only a single XF simulation. And you can see that here at the bottom, we're calling this the FDTD block. So at the top, we've got examples of L, Pi, and T networks. Uh, we have here uh, an aperture and impedance tuner connected to an antenna. The schematic editor will also account for operating mode. So imagine this impedance tuner tuned for various bands. And at the bottom, we have an example of a corporate feed network uh, complete with phase shifters connected with an antenna array. So when applied to the FDTD block, we can evaluate any number of schematic designs to see the impact on near and far field results, far field results and of course, system efficiency. The loss of antenna volume mandates an increase in the Q of the antenna. So to meet our bandwidth requirements of these high Q antennas, we must consider impedance and or aperture tuners. The schematic is not part of the physical design, so we still have a few steps in our workflow before we have an antenna that is giving us the good performance for return loss and system efficiency that you see in these graphs here to the right. We'll go over these steps on how to get these results, how these are, are achieved here shortly. Here are some examples of schematic designs with our editor. Keep in mind, this is a non-physical layout and not yet included in the 3D EM simulation space. I will use this GPS and Wi-Fi diplexer here at the bottom as an example uh, to walk us through our matching network workflow. So we think of matching networks as a about a four-step process in XF. Step one is to characterize our unmatched antenna and understand its performance. Step two. Once we have the antenna characterization, we can move to step two where we build out a schematic and design a schematic and decide what topology we need in order to generate the mesh that we want. Then we'll go to step three where we'll use the schematic we designed to guide our implementation of the matching network onto the PCV. So here we'll include our copper traces, our vias and transmission lines. We'll place them on the board. We'll run a response matrix to get simulation results of the antenna with the matching network topology included. Then we are going to uh, move over to the response matrix. Uh, so the component values in our schematic editor won't work once we have the physical layout due to the parasitics from the topology of the matching network. To resolve this, we'll move, we will run a multi-port response matrix on the antenna and the matching network. From there, we'll use our circuit element optimizer here at the end of step four uh, to optimize the values of our components so we can meet the goals we set for the antenna system, taking into account the parasitics from the topology. So once we have done this, we can then view our results. I'll walk us through this process here. So here we have an example of an antenna. We've got a substrate, a ground plane. We have a port feeding the antenna directly. Materials have been assigned and we have our grid and meshing set up 
so we can request results and run an FDTD simulation to calculate the unmatched antenna performance. So here we have S11 of the unmatched antenna. This looks like what you might expect. This will serve as our FDTD block for uh, evaluating our schematic designs. Step two, we will use the schematic editor to design our matching network. So you can see we've created a diplex circuit uh, for GPS and Wi-Fi. Both ports are loaded with 50 ohms. We have the GPS at the top, Wi-Fi at the bottom, uh, connected to the antenna port here with the FDTD block. So without having to run a new simulation, we can see how our antenna will, will perform with this schematic design. So here we can see we have good isolation between GPS and Wi-Fi at the GPS frequency, and these results look great. But uh, there is one key element that we have to consider, which is the parasitics from the topology. So we've run a simulation so you can see the parasitics that we need to address. As you might expect, expect if we are using the design we created with the schematic editor, we have results which capture the parasitics, which we do not want. And so this is why we'll implement our circuit element optimizer. So step three is to put the physical layout that was guided by the schematic editor onto the board with the antenna. So we have our GPS port here at the bottom left. Up here, we've got our Wi-Fi port, and then it's all connected to the antenna. We've got our traces, our vias, our pads, and we have the ports for each of our components. And there should be about 10 ports here. So then we'll run our multi-port response matrix and we will pass those results to our circuit element optimizer. Perhaps one of the most important aspects of the circuit element optimizer is for the ability to define goals. So in this simple GPS Wi-Fi diplex match example, we set goals of system efficiency for, for GPS and Wi-Fi at negative three dB and isolation between the GPS and Wi-Fi ports for the GPS frequency at negative 20 dB or less. And what the uh, circuit element optimizer will do is take the results from our multi-port response matrix and assign new components with new values to meet those goals. So here we've got the results with our circuit element optimizer showing good isolation between the GPS and Wi-Fi bands at the GPS frequency. And we have good system efficiency for both GPS and Wi-Fi. So this concludes our presentation on matching networks using our schematic editor and frequency domain circuit solver. If you have questions, please reach out to us at www.remcom.com or feel free to email us directly at sales at remcom.com. Thank you.